Greetings, welcome. So we're gonna, I actually am gonna wanna be able to compute a, a limit of a Riemann sum for you to show you how to do that, uh, which would give the area under the curve as we've talked about. And so there's kind of two pieces of mathematics that you could think, I'm either reminding you of them if you've already seen them, or I'm introducing you to them, uh, but they're very kind of useful uh, and good to know. Uh, so in this lecture, what we're going to talk about is horizontal asymptotes and limits as we go towards plus or minus infinity, uh, because this is actually going to show up and you're going to see, and it's going to get possibly a little bit confusing uh, because instead of taking the limit as x goes to plus or minus infinity, we're actually going to be taking the limit as n goes to plus or minus infinity. So you're going to have to be thinking of polynomials with a variable actually being n. But that's good to have to do that to, uh, in your mind sometimes. So the first thing that we're going to kind of, what we're going to look at is we're going to take some kind of, something called a rational function, which is a polynomial divided by a polynomial. Okay, so we're going to consider... The rational function and that looks like uh, P of X over Q of X right so in case you're, you're you didn't know this before this is what a rational function is where each of these is a polynomial we don't want this to be the zero polynomial that would just be a bit of a nightmare, okay? Um, but it's going to have zeros. It's a polynomial. It's going to have zeros. Okay, so I'm going to break this down into three different circumstances. So let's go with the first circumstance. So one, if we had that, so if we have that the degree of Q of X, right, the, the highest exponent in there, okay, uh, is greater than the degree of P of X. So this is our first circumstance that we're going to look at. Okay, so P of X and Q of X like this up here. So we're looking at the circumstance where the degree of the top is lower than the degree of the bottom. Okay, so an example would be X plus 3 over X squared minus 1, right? Because the degree of X is 1, the degree of X squared is 2. Okay, so the degree on the bottom is bigger, so that would be a nice example, but we'll look at one. Okay, so if this is the degree, as we put in larger and larger, so what does it mean to take the limit as I go towards plus, min, plus infinity? It means to put in larger and larger positive numbers. To take the limit as I go towards minus infinity is to put in larger and larger negative numbers. Okay, so as we put in larger and larger, so if this is our circumstance, so as we sub in or put in in larger and larger positive or negative values for x, Okay, well, what's going to happen? What's going to happen is that this function p of x divided by q of x is actually going to get really small. So it gets really small. And what do we mean by that? It approaches zero. Okay. So in this circumstance, um, if it's getting small, that means that the bottom is getting, um, right, the bottom is getting bigger faster than the top is, um, which is why you end up having that, you know, as they're putting in these bigger and bigger values, that you're actually getting something that's, um, uh, it, it's getting bigger on the bottom than on the top, Okay. So IE, so what does this tell us? So kind of symbolically what this tells me is that the limit as X goes to infinity of P of X over Q of X equals zero. And I also know that the limit 
as x goes minus infinity, so that's putting in larger and larger negative values. For x, this is going to equal 0 again. Okay. So it's going to do the same thing in both of those circumstances. So now we can kind of draw a picture. And look at an example. So this is going to be an example. So I'm going to look at the function where I have y equals f of... So let's look at y equals f of x equals 1 over x cubed. Okay, the degree of the top is 0, so that's smaller than the degree of the bottom, which is 3. So this is a good example. Well, let's label our axes. In this circumstance, we have x and y axes. And then I have, what's this function do? It kind of looks like this and like this. Okay, and so what's happening, so as I go towards minus infinity, that's like marching along, right? That's like marching along this way, okay? So this is how I march along. This is what happens, so as x goes to minus infinity, this is what I'm looking at. So this is uh, x going to minus infinity. is the same thing as marching back this way. And what happens is I march back this way to the graph of this function while it approaches zero. Okay, so we get that the limit as x approaches minus infinity, right, x is marching back this way of 1 over x cubed. So I'm putting in really, really big positive negative numbers for x there. What I get out is 0, okay? Now what happens is I march towards, um, as I march towards positive infinity, Sometimes we drop the positive on there. If there's not a negative sign, we know we mean positive infinity. Well, again, so what happens is my x values march out this way. Took, 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 took. Then I look at what happens to the graph of the function, and it's actually approaching 0. Okay, so I'm going to get the limit as x approaches positive infinity of 1 over x cubed is also going to equal 0. Okay. This was the graph. I'm looking at the graph of this function in the picture. Okay, so this was my example, and you could kind of see, and you could think of it, I'm putting in values like minus 100, minus 1,000, and so on, and my denominator is getting really, really big, and so this is that's going to dominate. Okay, now, what happens if... Okay, so what's going to happen if the degree, yeah, I'm going to make a decision here to divide this up into three pieces. I mean, I should have made that decision in the start, but it'll work now. We'll just have to be a little flexible in what we're doing. Okay, um, so the next example, and I can start up here, so it gives me a little bit more room. Okay, so if the degree of Q of X is less than or equal to the degree of P of X, No, I think I just want it less than. So we want that the degree of Q of X is less than the degree of P of X. Sometimes I do make typos in the videos. You're going to find that. Um, I apologize in advance. And I do like that you're asking these questions in the comments and feedback fruit. So I've now figured out how to that when I'm getting emails from Feedback Fruits, I'm supposed to look at those because those are notifications, and I look and I say, oh, okay, I can answer that question, or yeah, you're right, there's a typo. I'll, you know, I, I do have also the notes, so if you're not sure, you can first check the notes, but there might also be a typo in there. Um, but sometimes uh, it's like another step of transcribing from there to here. Uh, so, okay, so as we put in these, um, so what happens in this circumstance, I got a lot of E's going on there, don't I? Okay, so in this circumstance, what's going to happen is that we, as we put in larger and larger positive or negative values, so as we 
put in larger and larger positive or negative values Right, what we're going to have is we either get really big positive values or really big negative values. So we either get really big positive values or we get really big negative values. Okay, i.e., so this is where we kind of say symbolically, I'm going to have that the limit as x goes to infinity, so this is like positive infinity of p of x over q of x is going to equal positive infinity, oh sorry, is going to equal plus or minus infinity, and the limit as x goes to negative infinity of p of x over q of x is going to equal plus or minus infinity. Okay, so this is where students ask me, but how do you know? Okay, um, so looking at this part here, can I circle this? Yeah. Okay, so looking at that part there, so students often ask me, how do you know? There's multiple ways to do it. One of them is to like look at the graph. Um, and you can also just plug in really, really big values and see what happens, okay? Okay, so to figure these out, plug, you can either plug in really big values or look at the graph to figure out the sign. Okay, so let's look in an example. It helps to see an example. So let me So I have my x-axis, I have my y-axis, and the function that I want to look at is y equals, oops, wrong color, is going to be y equals f of x is going to equal x cubed plus 1 over 1 minus x squared. So now we have that the top has a larger degree because it's 3 than the bottom whose degree is 2. Okay, and the graph of this function is going to look something like this. And then there's actually kind of a vertical asymptote here. Um, and then it kind of goes up and then down. Okay, so now we can kind of follow what happens, right? As I march along and I put minus values, right? So now what happens is I march along the x-axis, right? And then I look at what's happening here. Okay, so as x goes to minus infinity, which happens as I march along the x-axis this way, what happens to this? I can see that this is actually uh, going towards positive infinity. So this ends up going to positive infinity. Okay, so that tells me there that the limit as x goes to minus infinity, the minus infinity being what's happening with the x values, and this is telling me my output, so that tells me what's happening with my f of x, so of f of x, and I can see there that it's going to equal plus infinity, right, because this is going up. Okay, and now we look at this one over here. So if putting in x values, what does it mean to approach positive infinity, it means like I'm going like in this direction, okay? But what's happening to the graph? Well, the graph is actually 
going down towards negative infinity, right? So you can see the graph getting lower and lower, which is telling me it's going towards negative infinity. And that's my f of x, so that's my output. And so that's actually going to tell me that the limit is x. So x is going towards infinity of f of x, but then I look at my output, and my output's going towards minus infinity. Okay? So now we have one more. I'm going to have to be a little careful because sometimes I could run off the end there. So these are two situations so far. Let's look at one last situation. So one last situation. So this is three. Okay, so in this situation, I'm looking at if... The degree of, so these are, remember, are polynomials because it's a rational function, so these are polynomials. So I'm looking at the degree of q of x, and I'm going to say it's going to equal the degree of p of x. So this is this circumstance. Okay. Um... Maybe I'm also, I'm going to box for you just to kind of highlight that these are the situations. These are your output situations. So this is like your input situations and your output situations. A similar one here, although I kind of got a little bit carried away there with letting you kind of understand how to compute those. But you can kind of see them in the graph in this circumstance. Okay, um, so now we're looking at this situation where the degree of Q of X equals the degree of P of X. And then what I'm going to end up having is so I'm going to get a horizontal asymptote, which is a ratio of leading coefficients. So I'm going to get a horizontal asymptote. Okay, which is going to equal the ratio of the leading coefficients. So let's kind of see what I mean by that. Okay, so here we go. Um, so I have the x-axis and the y-axis, and then I have, okay, so I have, it's going to go like this, and we have this, it's going to go like that, and this is going to go like that, okay? Um, so the graph, so this function, what I have graphed here is actually the graph of, um, I'm going to write it down here for us. So this is y equals 2x squared plus 1 divided by O. There should be kind of a gap here. Let me... Um, I didn't quite draw these correctly. So what's going to happen here, and I can tell before I even look at it what's going to happen, which is that... Um, let's do this in orange. So there's going to be this line here that they're going to approach that they're never going to get to, which is at minus two-thirds. Okay, so uh, how did I kind of pick this out? So why did I start looking at that here? So let's highlight for ourselves that this two is a leading coefficient on the top and that it's the one that's in front of the biggest degree polynomial or term there. And on the bottom, I have 1 minus 3x squared. So I have a minus 3 as being the coefficient of the leading term there. Okay? So that's, gonna, that's where I'm getting that minus 2 thirds actually from. And we're going to see that show up. 
So as I truck along in, right, as my x goes to positive, this is how my x goes to positive infinity. This is how my x goes to negative infinity. Okay. Uh, and as I truck along there, well, the first thing I do is I put my x back in there. Um, but as I truck along, what I can see is that as x goes in this direction, well, what's happening is I'm actually approaching this asymptote. Okay. Uh, so we're going to have that the limit as x approaches infinity of this f of x, which is this p of x over q of x, is actually going to equal minus two-thirds. And in this circumstance, you can also see it approaching there. So my limit as x goes to minus infinity of f of x is again going to equal minus two-thirds. All right. Again, coming from the ratio of the leading coefficients. Okay. And so you're going to actually see me doing that. Okay. So I'm going to be doing the ratio of the leading coefficients. So to kind of summarize what's happening... Um, is that I'm going to, right, so I'm looking at situations where I have a polynomial over a polynomial. And in fact, in the next video, when we look at them, not in the next one, I think I, I do a summation practice also, but after that, um, they're, they're actually polynomials of n. So don't get confused when I replace the variable x by n. And so I'm going to just break it into the circumstances. So the degree, right, um, is the number in front of the highest uh, degree term. So they're... It's, so this is the three, this is, sorry, the leading coefficient is the one in front of the highest degree term. It's the power of the highest degree term. So here it's three or two, or here they're the same, so it's two and two, okay? And I just kind of broke it into the three circumstances. How do you get a sense of why these things are true? Another thing is, if I'm going towards positive infinity, what am I really doing? I'm just plugging in really, really big positive numbers. And if I'm going towards minus infinity, start plugging in really, really big negative numbers and see what it approaches. Or you can kind of look graphically like we did here. Uh, and then you're going to be, it's actually going to tell you how to compute these limits. Okay, so I think, I hope that made some sense. And then I'll see you in the next lecture.